Hi, it's Dwyer. It's Monday, November 15th, 2021. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. Just here to give a post-fight report on a fight that did not deliver for me. I lost on both halves of the bet. But a fight in which I have no regrets whatsoever, apart from the lost money, on the fighter I picked. I took Gabe Rosado, a plus 450 underdog. Right? What the plus 450 means is that the casino's telling you that if these guys fought five and a half times, Gabe Rosado would only win once. And he was going up against an unbeaten rising fighter, 38 and 0 with 30 knockouts, Jaime Munguia. Now the pre-fight video is still up. The fight was a classic. Right? Just understand that Gabe Rosado at 35, 10 years older than Jaime Munguia, is having a renaissance in his career. Just understand that his career has had highs and lows. Right? He got KO'd by David Lemieux years ago. He beat Joshua Clotty. He, in my opinion, may have gotten robbed in a recent fight against Danny Jacobs. He was the underdog and KO'd Melikusiev, who people viewed as the future in the division. So here he is, five and a half, uh, five eleven and a half, right, thirty-five years old, has kept himself in shape and can still make weight at middleweight, at 35. Now he's fighting, really, someone who is much younger, who is coming at the sport from a different angle. If you looked at the weigh-in, you looked at Jaime Munguia, who's six feet tall, fighting at 160, who's 25 years old. And you thought to yourself, he looks weight-drained. Right, just like David Benavides looked weight drained at his way in. When you see a fighter who's weight drained, it means different things at different times in their career. Right? When a guy looks weight drained and he's 35, like Gabe Rosado, they're problems. Because understand, as you get older, your body doesn't bounce back as well as it once did. Right? It simply doesn't. It lets you know that the guy has punished himself to make weight. And understand too, when I say your body doesn't bounce back, history is filled with guys who drained themselves to make weight who then got seriously hurt in the ring. Gerald McClellan comes to mind. Right? Um, your punch resistance goes when you yo-yo and -yo wait and you're older, right? Your stamina goes. To make the way in, you had to lose 8 to 12 pounds, right? That's when you notice it shows in your neck and all that other stuff. You had to lose 8 to 12 pounds. So later in a fight, after you've gained back, the 8 to 12 pounds in the day or so between the weigh-in and the actual fight. You'll notice that guys get to the 8th round, they're looking good, then suddenly the bottom falls out. Their body says, hey player, remember the 8 to 12 pounds that we gained in the last 24 hours? They all matter now. Right? So understand, Gabe Rosado is in shape all the time. That's how he's made it to 35 and still been competitive in fights against people like Danny Jacobs. By contrast, Jaime Munguia couldn't make 160, in my opinion, 24 hours before the fight. Right. Well, put it this way, couldn't make 160 48 hours before the fight, was able to make it 24 hours before the fight, 
certainly wasn't in the area code of 160 on fight night, in my opinion. But when you're 25, your body bounces back. When you're 25, your stamina bounces back. So, Jaime Munguia in this fight was forced to actually fight back. A veteran was there testing him. And Jaime Munguia in the later rounds of this fight in which I thought he had yo-yoed in weight, still had his stamina. Still had his volume, his throwing punches. He's not defensively blessed, although, big surprise for me, his defense has improved dramatically. Right? He did flash some defense the first, we'll say, third of the fight. But understand, in the last third of the fight, his defense was slipping. But he was able to compensate. Because, thank God, it's good to have young lungs. It's good to have young stamina. And he showed it. He threw a lot of punches. He kept Gabe Rosado, the man 10 years older, busy. Rosado wasn't able to sit there and just wait for openings. He had to dodge bullets. Right? There was no place to just sit there. I congratulate Hami Mangia on winning the fight. I thought it was close. Right? I congratulate him on winning the fight. The bet I recommended lost both halves. I wanted the plus 450 with Rosado. I was going to hedge the play with Munguia by stoppage. It's a tribute to Gabe Rosado that in a fight where Jaime Munguia was on his A game, this was vintage Jaime Munguia. This was one of his better fights. A man 10 years older than him was still competitive all the way until the closing bell. Right? Let me just make a few points here. These are the fights you need to look for. Boxing has patterns. Winning bets have patterns. You see a young guy who is still figuring things out. Right? Mungi is still figuring things out. His defense is improving He's not defensively blessed. You notice he relies heavily on hooks, right? He doesn't play distance games. There aren't going to be the rounds where he comes out and suddenly he's flashing a back foot. Suddenly he's throwing long punches, not short punches. Suddenly he's moving around the ring. Whether it's to rest, whether it's just to throw you off your game. Disrupt your pattern. Keep you guessing. That's not Munguia at 25. Right? His game's improving, but it's incremental improvement. Let me also point out, too, that one of the hardest things to do in sports, in my opinion, is to convince a successful fastball pitcher, and we're using analogies here, to learn other pitches. Right? The guy got to the big leagues with the fastball. He's been told he's the best thing since sliced bread. Since oxygen. Since he was a little kid. He's had success. He has syncophants around him. An entourage around him. People who depend on him. He's the big man in the neighborhood. Off his game. Why is he going to take time to change his game? Right? You have that situation at heavyweight, although the guy now is changing his game somewhat. With Deontay Wilder. Right? Straight right hand, it's beautiful. Why learn anything else? People are falling down in front of me. I'm winning every fight by stoppage. Right? Why do I need to learn a lot of other things? Right? Truth be told, Wilder actually does know some other things. Look at the first Remains to Vern fight where Wilder's on his back foot. But understand, that was several fights ago. Right? Wilder might have worked on some other things. That B game is well in the background. With Jaime Munguia, 
I've seen Munguia on his back foot a little bit in the past. But to paraphrase Bob Seeger in Against the Wind, right? Munguia doesn't know now what he didn't know then. Right? Munguia is just learning the sport. Stuff that savants, a Floyd Mayweather, knew at a young age right back foot defense rolling with punches Mungi is just figuring out now so let's look at the position Gabe Rosado was in you're a vet you understand that the other guy is the overwhelming favorite you understand that the judges are going to be impacted, quite frankly. Let's be real. Let's keep it 100. The judges are going to be impacted by who is expected to win. Who is the overwhelming favorite? Right? These rounds don't start out 50-50, folks. Right? The judges expect the young guy to win the fight. So if you're the old guy, you understand, as Kiko Martinez commented after his stunning victory yesterday excuse me, Saturday night. You understand that you have to beat the young guy by a margin if you're going to win on the scorecards. You understand because the young guy is heavy-handed, your odds of winning by decision are less than your odds of winning by stoppage. You're fighting a young heavy-handed guy who has defensive lapses. How are you going to spend your time? Is it going to be trying to win rounds to win on the scorecard or is it going to be to try to wait for the four to six opportunities you have to land heavy counters? In my opinion, Gabe Rosado wisely chose the latter. Right, especially looking at the scorecards, which were too wide. This was a competitive fight. So Gabe Rosado is there, and he is waiting for the sun to break through the clouds. He's waiting for Munguia to make mistakes. I thought Gabe Rosado had about four good chances in this fight to land a hard counter to either knock down Munguia or to greatly diminish him. So a stoppage would be far more likely. There are two times in this fight where I thought one's around the seventh round where I thought Rosado actually nails Munguia who has a chin and gets him to back up. But let me applaud Munguia who won this fight Munguia had far more left in the tank than I thought, right? Munguia was able to come back in the later rounds, in my opinion, right? To gamblers out there, these are the fights you need to look at. These are the opportunities that present themselves, right? In another fight, Kiko Martinez beats Kid Galahad, same type dynamic kg vet who had been in against superior opposition against a younger guy who was overrated right now here Munguia I'm gonna be hard here because we're talking about gambling this isn't some PR thing right you know Munguia is too upright there's not much you can do when you're six feet at 160 and you see yourself as a alpha a knockout puncher and you don't prioritize early in your career movement around the ring so Rosado understood that he wouldn't have to go looking for Munguia this isn't a fight where you spend the first three rounds figuring out how am I gonna cut off the ring on, uh, on this guy no, no, no. This is a fight where the guy is in front of you. But the guy's heavy handed. And he's throwing volume. So you'll notice Rosado 
has both hands up. Defense is a top priority for him. Because understand, he's going to have to, in a fight where he's fighting an opponent 10 years younger, weather the storm in the early rounds. Wait for the adrenaline to die down. Wait for the young guy to actually start tiring a little bit so he can be ready to land the key punch. Think George Foreman against Michael Moore. What I want people to do is to focus on Foreman's comments after that fight. Right? Foreman, quite frankly, was one of the more skilled guys, big slugger, with a great jab, with an Archie Moore defense, who understood how to lean on you. Right? Foreman, who was kind of in the Gabe Rosado position for that Michael Moore fight, Moore was the heavyweight champ at the time, said that in the early rounds, he didn't want to hit Moore too hard. I know it's counterintuitive. Right? Foreman, a guy with a lot of early KOs. Joe Fraser, the first fight, doesn't make it to the third round. Kenny Norton doesn't make it to the third round. Jerry Cooney, when Foreman returns, gets stopped early. But yet, here's George Foreman against a young guy who we understood had resiliency. Right? Had the benefits of being young. Your body bounces back more. Foreman, a puncher, didn't want to hit Moore too hard early in the fight because he thought that Moore would stay away from him. So Foreman, early in the fight, was feeling the lay of the land but didn't want to show all of his cards. I believe that's Gabe Rosado in this fight. Right, Foreman also had another thing. As he put it, he wanted to taste Moore's power. He wanted, he didn't want to get knocked out, but he wanted to get a feel when he was 100% on how hard the guy hit, just to know what he's in against. So Foreman lingered around a little bit more than he normally did. Got hit with some more shots, felt the shots. I believe that's Gabe Rosado this fight. The early rounds are interesting because you notice Rosado has his hands up. You notice Rosado is not moving away from Munguia. You notice, too, Rosado doesn't come in. This isn't the Fed who comes in and says, let me bum rush this guy. Let me try to surprise him. Let me push this guy the first four rounds. If it's my night, I'll continue pushing. If it's not my night, I'll quit on the stool and we'll leave her early. That's not this guy, right? Rosado isn't starting this fight like a Derek Chisora would, right? It's a measured, calibrated fight by Rosado. I believe Rosado comes out and thinks to himself, okay, this guy's a young athlete. I was this guy's age a decade ago. Let me make sure my hands are up. Look at Rosado's defense. Right? Let me figure out the angles on this guy. Let me feel this guy out. My game is geared for four to six moments in this fight. When this guy slips up, maybe it's boredom, maybe it's fatigue, maybe it's lack of knowledge. When this guy slips up, I need to be ready. Right? So this match is a chess match. I thought Rosado had some opportunities. I'll give Munguia credit. There's a moment in this fight where Rosado gets Munguia over by the ropes and tries to open up. Munguia, wisely, doesn't try to just trade with him. Munguia understands. Okay, this guy has me over by the ropes. Let me cover up myself. Right, Munguia also, unlike Mikey Garcia in his last fight, Munguia seemed to realize at the end of the ninth round that the fight was still close. 
he works awfully hard the last three rounds. Right? Rosado has paced himself from jump. So Rosado at 35 still has stamina. In the 10th, 11th, and 12th rounds, he's still waiting for that moment and also then pushing it because he's running out of time. But Munguia is prepared, unlike Mikey Garcia, who seemed to feel that he was on his way to a victory, who seemed to feel that his celebrity was going to carry him in a close fight. Munguia leaves nothing to chance. You notice he's keeping Rosado busy. Let me point out, though, that when you do that, you actually leave yourself open for counters. Understand what Munguia couldn't do because he just doesn't have it in his game. Is to start throwing a jab and to start backing up. To slow down the fight using boxing skills. So to sum up here, I congratulate the champ. Munguia's defense, particularly for the first third of the fight, was much better than I anticipated. He is a gifted offensive fighter. He wants to fight Golovkin, right? Munguia, so to speak, is trying to teach guys in their mid to late 30s a lesson, right? Savvy move by him as he learns the game. You might as well face guys who are a little bit older. But Munguia is on my list of young guys, young unbeaten guys, who are vulnerable, right? Gabe Rosado came close, folks. He had some openings. He threw some big shots. Wasn't able to land them squarely. When he gets Munguia backed up, had Munguia tried to trade with him, Rosado would have had even more of an opportunity. Right? Let me also point out, too, that when you see a vet like a Gabe Rosado, a guy who's kept himself in shape, who has shown once again against world-class opposition, right? It was only two fights ago that he went the distance against Danny Jacobs. He's shown you once again that he could go the distance against world-class opposition. When you see a guy like Rosado who has a punch, who knows how to pace himself, who is a counterpuncher, and who has stamina. That's the kind of guy who you want to take when the casino slips up and starts giving you things like a plus 450. Right? We didn't make it to the penthouse in this fight. I lost on this fight. I'm undeterred. Right? When I see another young guy who has holes in his game or who's fixing the holes in his game like Jaime Munguia is and that person is going up against a KG vet who can pace himself, who has stamina, who understands it's unlikely he's going to win on the scorecards but that he's going to have an opportunity every two to three rounds to hurt the guy, to knock him down, to diminish him, to stun him, then I'm going to take that KG vet when offered these odds. In my favorites folder are the highlights from this fight. Folks, they run for several minutes. This was one of the best fights of the year. If you saw the fight first, and then I asked you after the fight, what odds did you think you were getting on Gabe Rosado? I doubt anybody would be above a plus 200. You got a plus 450. The bet didn't work out. Sometimes the best bets don't work out. But we'll be back at it. I'm going to definitely be trying to find more fights like this before they happen so I can bet on the underdog. I congratulate Munguia. 
I think a fight against him and Golovkin would be fascinating. Golovkin might have a belt after his upcoming fight against uh, Rayota Riata. Uh, we will see. Anyway, that's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this YouTube video. Thanks for stopping by.